exist tonight, right? I don't know. I, I, I mean, like, I was pretty certain it was tonight. No, tomorrow. Fuck. That would explain why nobody's getting on. Nobody's getting on, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was tonight because she set it up like right away. Whatever. That oh, works. Yeah. At least we're not waiting for nothing. Thank God. screwed up because I put the tweet out. Oh. Twitter page. Okay. It's like, why didn't it, why did it do that? What is, what's, what's going on? What's wrong? Uh, 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 uh. I'll never get you. This is the collision of common sense and comedy. This is Defenders Live. Woo! Okay, okay. It's hot. Still. It's summertime. I know. I don't like it. Can summer, st- can, can summer, we stop now? summer time. Can we stop it now? Why? Can we just, can we just be done? God, you're like the. She, she wants the the girlfriend wants to have it. She's ready for October. I, I just want it cold. I don't care what time I of year I, it is. I just want it colder. Why? Because the only thing I like about being colder is that I could turn around and have like. I can add layers. I was gonna say I can have layers on so I don't look as fat. I, I can, can have blame la- it on clothing. I could have layers on so I could stay warm. I'd rather. Put layers on to stay warm, then have to take everything off to stay cool. Yeah. Yeah, but then we don't have... The grass won't be green. Who cares? The trees won't be green. Who cares? I do, because it looks ugly and depressing. <laughs> oh, you have seasonal. Yeah, that's right. I I do. You have the seasonal. I hate it. I truly hate really it. I really like, do. I forget about that. I'm yeah. good. Yeah. After January, I, I'm good with it up till January 5th. After that... You're like, it needs to stop. I'm like, <laughs> I'm ready now. <laughs> What are we doing here? Where is the sunshine? <laughs> I was promised sunshine. You just need a place with evergreens. No, no. Evergreens don't count. I mean, it would help, but it don't count. It would help. By the way, uh, 
we have one story uh, about uh, the Marlagos uh, here, uh, but um, tomorrow was, night. The way you hemmed and hawed there for a minute, I was like, wait a minute, what? Yeah, tomorrow night, we're actually going to have a constitutional lawyer, actual lawyer. Who uh, might be able to explain better? Who who could be able to explain better? It's uh, Jonathan Emmert. Uh, you've probably seen him on pretty much every... Everything? Everything. And everywhere? Like, if you look up his name, you he has interviews from everybody, everywhere, um, he is, he's currently right now, he's talking specifically about this and about the FBI raid and constitutionality and all the rest of it. So we're going to get like the big scoop from him, but we got one little story. Do we even need to? Oh yeah. We, yeah. we got one little story. Well, well, yeah. Okay, we'll, one, one little bit that is just kind of, it, it's, it just ekes at it. Like it, we kind of have yeah, to, yeah, there's, it's nothing. This is actually like even, this is just kind of, it's a step or two away from the actual story. Yeah, of of the the, the raid, and I'll explain. Mm-hmm. Former President Donald Trump announced on Monday that the FBI has raided his Mar-a-Lago home in Florida. Yeah, we we know, which I didn't know until just a little while ago. But yeah, we know. Right. But Simone Sanders, MSNBS host, mm-hmm. uh, as who's previously served as a senior administrator and the chief spokesman for the vice president Kamala Harris. Okay is calling for people to stop using the term raid. Why? Because it's for roaches. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Like, it, it, are, we, are, no, are we now against not, offending no. roaches at I this point? Is I that what this is all about? I mean, it definitely scares them when you, when you scream out, raid! But oh, yeah, no, totes does. Yeah, right. Uh, it says, quote, Please, folks, stop calling it a raid. Why? What else would you call it? Why do I have to stop calling it a raid? Why? Yeah, actually, that, that's the next question. Why do we have to stop calling it a raid when it was you, when when the summer of love, twenty twenty, mm-hmm. was absolutely not a summer of love? Well, when when you call domestic violence. Love. Love. When you call ransacking entire cities, love. And when you say that violent destruction Mm -hmm. of personal and public property is nothing but a rally. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Harmless protest. When you keep on saying that it's a harmless <clears throat> protest, why would I ever take you at your word to tell other people that they're using a term incorrectly? I want to know why she doesn't want to use it as a ra- doesn't want to use that word. Is it because ultimately that it was at Aud Mar Lago and Trump's place, and so therefore it's not a raid? It's it was deserved? Is that what she's implying? I, there has to be more. And please tell me that there's a clearer explanation to this. No. There isn't? She no. just threw there's, it out there and said, don't call it a raid. Yeah, and there's more people out there that's doing this. Uh, author Terry Canefield. I have no idea who that is. Oh, yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. She describes herself as a former appellate defender. But was she actually a former appellate defender? I don't know. That's what she describes herself as. Yeah, but declared you, in a tweet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I can describe myself. <laughs> and I describe myself. I can describe myself as an Adonis-like figure. You know what, though? Um, mm. That doesn't necessarily make it true. Well, oh, so, okay. All right, hold on. Hold on now. It may not be Adonis. I could live here. No, no, it may not have been Adonis. More like Bacchus. No. <laughs> <laughs> but but you could pretty much take any royalty any royalty of any anybody like 200 years back and before and pretty much claim that you're you have a body like theirs i'm henry the eighth yes you are <laughs> henry the eighth you am one way <laughs> <laughs> Except for I'm not trying to separate from the Catholic Church. Also, not marrying widows from next door. True. And then killing off the ones I have. Right. Allegedly. 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 Well. Allegedly. I'm not talking about you. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> All my exes are still alive. Thank That's you very much. <laughs> Some of them in Texas. Anyway. <laughs> that hurts. I know. It's sad, but it's true. I know. That's why. Anyway. So, so anyway. <laughs> author she, Terry Canefield. The person we don't know. but Self-described as the former appellate defender declared in a tweet uh, that people should drop the word raid. She said people should not allow Trump and his allies to be framing the message. So now it's framing the oh, message. But, but hold on. So now it's framing the message. But I hold, hold the fin. All right. Okay. Yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. So a raid uh-huh. by any other standard. Let's just, let's just describe if what a raid is. If it wasn't at Marlock. No, 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 let's describe what a raid is. Okay. A raid is raid. multiple agents, multiple uh, 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 armed uh, law enforcement officers uh-huh. from whatever. Whether it whatever be CIA, branch, FBI, it, it whatever. Have to be FBI. It doesn't. It could be any anyone, any group, group of law enforcement officers convening into one locale, onto one place, in the intent to search and seize, uh, and possibly arrest uh, due to you know whatever criminal stuff is there. Anything that is on the property. Right. Okay? Because mm-hmm. it is believed uh, through at least a warranted statement or whatever that it is a uh, uh, something for criminal activity. Okay? That's what a raid is. Now, I wasn't there, but I'm going to ask, isn't that kind of how it happened? Isn't that what happened? There was multiple agents who converged on one locale with the intent to find uh, 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 incriminating evidence. I, you can't sit here and say, well, you can't use the word raid and then because they're, they're allies to frame a messaging. No, no, it was a raid. Doesn't matter who it's on, pumpkin. Mm-hmm. A raid is a raid is a raid is a raid. You just don't want it to be called that because you think for some weird reason it's deserved. Which it's not. You have no actual evidence. There's nothing you can do to point and say that Mar-a-Lago is a place that you need to be looking at as a harbinger or what have you of, uh, of, of I don't know, uh, criminal activity. Sure. Because it's not. Right. And multiple, we all know that. Multiple officers with a warrant. Mm-hmm. Going into a place. Right. Searching. Yes. That, that's a raid. That's a raid. Mm-hmm. Period. Yep. That's not framing a messaging. That's, that's stating fact. That's what it is. Again, just because you think that... It's not... It, it, they don't have to go in there toting guns, get everybody on the ground, go, go, go. Well, no, but that's probably what they did. That's what I would assume happened. I mean, correct uh, me if I'm wrong. No, not necessarily. They sure as hell did not show up at the door and be like... Pardon me, Mr. Trump. I was wondering if we could walk around. We have a piece of paper that says we could walk right here. Uh, well, that didn't happen. It wasn't that, but it was somewhere in between. Okay? It was definitely somewhere in between. It was, it, there was a knock on the door, but it wasn't, a, excuse me, Mr. President. It was former Mr. President Donald Trump. We have, a, we have a signed warrant here. We are here to search your premises. Please move out of the way. Yeah, but I'm saying, but you know, that <laughs> we, yeah, but that's still a raid. It's still a raid. Just because nobody got violent. Yeah, because there weren't they weren't, you know, brandishing weapons and right. you know, using the uh, battering ram or anything doesn't mean that it's not a raid. Mm-hmm. And yes, they would knock. The reason why he's the former president. Oh, that's true too. It doesn't matter about anything. He's the for- they're gonna give him respect because he was a president. Yeah. And that's all they're gonna give him. Yeah, just that little monicum of respect. It doesn't matter what else happened. They're gonna at least give him that. Uh, quote, Canefield also said, people don't have to, uh, uh, people have to stop calling it a raid. Well, it was a lawful search pursuant to a warrant. Don't let Trump and pals uh, frame the message. Uh, but it, that's what a raid, raid is. is. It, that was, that was a raid. I can't with these stupid ass that, that people. Was, that was a raid. 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 That that was it. That that was a raid. You did the raid. That that's a, a warranted search and seizure of property. Are, are are we are we doing full descriptions here? Mm-hmm. 
Okay, go ahead. Let's see. Go ahead. Uh, and this is from Google. Defining our terms. Defining our terms. You have it as a noun. Uh-huh. Raid or raids in the plural. A sudden attack by on an enemy by troops, aircraft, or other armed forces in warfare. Okay, Doesn't gotcha. apply. Doesn't apply here. Uh, a surprise attack to commit a crime, especially to steal from business premises. Okay. Doesn't also apply. doesn't apply here. Uh Surprise visit by police to arrest suspected people or seize illicit goods. Ding, ding, ding. It's in the Googles. It's right there. And they think that there were illicit goods in some documentation. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see. uh, As a verb. Oh, it's just verbs at that point. Verb, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I am raiting the property. Right. I am. Yep, yep. But yeah, so it's, it's in the Googles. It's in the Googles. Mm-hmm. It's right, right there. Right. As illicit the definition. To any illicit properties. Yeah. And as far as they're concerned that anything that has to do with Trump is illicit. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> so it's a raid. So it's a raid. Right. So you're an idiot. Yes. You're a dummy, dummy, dumb, dumb. I but need to go for, find the tweet so I can outright call her a dumbass. So uh, for, for all the people out there, when we go through the rest of the story, that'll be tomorrow when we talk to uh, the, the constitutional lawyer. That's what we're going to do then. <laughs> you know what's scary? How big he is. How accurate that is as far as I'm concerned. Russell Crowe, yeah. Like, that used to be me. Gladiator. And now, now this, this is me. Yeah, not so gladiator. Just like that. Stand out there looking like Gorsuch, smoking a cigarette, sleeping up against something, going, dear God, what's gone with my life? What am I doing wrong? <laughs> Thank you, James. He I wasn't so de- much. I wasn't depressed before. I'm depressed now. He feels Thank so much you. better now. It's, if this could happen to Maxus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the north, general of the Felix Legions, loyal servant of Emperor Marcus Aurelius, the true emperor. Ah, yes, the true emperor. He didn't have that on there. Then us mere mortals have no chance. <laughs> I always feel like I should have been saying it in his voice, too. I am Marcus Aurelius. Uh, no, 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 no. It's more gravelly, and I yeah, need more time. More I'm laughing too much you at need it because I'm one. trying to and laugh. Your ears are weird, so it's not, yeah. not going to work. I'm trying out. to laugh and do yeah. the pain. Mm-hmm. Not good. Because it's true. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> GOP representative Liz, Liz Cheney of Wyoming, outspoken critic of the President Donald Trump, has been a pariah for the Republican Party and. Uh, could lose her seat. Uh huh. Yeah. No, we're we're fully aware of it. Like Prim- why? Primarily, why is she still there is she beyond could, me. Yeah, she could primarily lose her seat to a lady named uh, Harriet Hagman. Okay. Um, who is apparently backed by Trump. Okay. 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 But Cheney's getting some political support from um, unusual sources. Unusual, you say? Mm-hmm. Really? How unusual are we talking? Pretty bad. How bad? <laughs> like you gotta be a little bit more clear than it's that. pretty bad. Is it? Yeah. How bad? It's pretty bad. Not like you got me worried now. It's like Nambla bad. Shut up. Yeah. It's pretty bad. <sighs> yeah. Democrat representatives Dean Phillips of Minnesota and Tom Molinowski of New Jersey have both appeared in videos calling for people to support Liz Cheney. That should be all the more reason that uh, final nail in the coffin. If the left wants this lady, you need to run and run quickly. This is this is kind of how it is. It, it really is. You, you know, need to get gone from her. Yeah, Phillips even urged people to con, uh, uh, please consider temporarily switching parties to vote for Liz Cheney on August 16th. Wow. So here's what it is. Wow. Democrats are so caught up in the fact that they can't win Wyoming that they're just like, they're going to settle for Cheney because she's a half, she's basically a Democrat. Yeah. Because why not? She's a rhino, Republican in name only. But once again, if you don't know by now, all politics is wrestling, soap opera, et cetera. That's all it is. Yep. People switch sides all the time. They do. They go back to their, they, they, they go back and the producer tells them, yeah, I need you to be a bad guy for the next. Yeah. Month. You're going to, you're going to lose these next couple of times, but don't worry. We'll bring it back later. We'll bring it back later. And you'll be a Vic. You, you'll be the victor then. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah, you'll be the hero. But but right now you've got to take a losing seat. This is no. That's huh, this is horrible. And you know what's bad is it'll probably happen too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, yeah. no, they can't change out now because it's already past the primary season and you, you can't change your party affiliation, but you can vote for her whether whether, whether you want to or not. Oh, good. Good. Primaries are done. But, however Wyoming works, I guess, it's two Republicans against each other. And then also a Democrat somewhere in there. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, uh, hmm. Oh, wait, no, sorry. My fault. Apparently, August 16th is the voting line for primaries. Well, that's what I'm saying, and that's over with. Yeah. Well, no, no it's, it's not. August that's 16th. coming up. That's coming up. It's this week. Yeah. So, my fault. So, that's what I'm saying. So, if they switch, though, but will they have time to switch back? No. No, you can't. You'll have to be that way for the next until the next election. <laughs> <laughs> but even then, does it really matter? No. 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 But, I mean... Malinowski of the New Jersey said in his video that uh, the Wyoming Democrats could place, quote, country over party by registering to vote for Cheney in the Republican primary. Mm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, why they want her? I mean, I know why they want her so bad. But yeah, they, they want her because she's she's another... Uh, what what are their names? Uh, <laughs> all the crappy ones that we just like really. All like the this. ones that the idiots that we named off. All all the idiots that we love to name off that are in the Republican Party that are just complete trash. Susan Collins, that yeah. one, you yeah. know, stuff like that. Yeah. She's another Susan Collins, you know. Murkowski. <sighs> Lisa Murkowski. Yeah. I, I just if the if the left is 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 hoping to God that she runs and wins, then then you need to you need to be against it even more. Right. Just saying. That's all I can say about yeah. that. If, because that's incredible. Why? If Democrats mm. want her, if the Democrats want her, you have to question why. That that's the question. Right? Why? Why would they want her? Why would they push why? to get push a Republican? Why would into they office? encourage their own group to say, "Hey, switch parties, switch parties, yeah, move party. over, yeah." No, no, that's not not good at all, right? No. No, 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 no. I kind of think that uh, we might see a little bit of uh, voter fraud issues in, <gasps> in Wyoming here. What? Yeah, just just a little, just thinking out loud. Not, here. no. We might see some incongruities you mean in, in, the, the, vo in the votes. The voting out there might become a little sus. Is that it what might you're saying? Be suspect in the, uh, in the Republican primary where we randomly see an influx of uh, hundreds of thousands of unknown Republican voters. Just suddenly, out of nowhere, suddenly, huh? That have never voted in the elections ever before in the primaries. Really? That's uh -huh. that's uh. Technically, you can't. It's technically not illegal. So technically, you have to count the vote. Hmm. You don't say. Uh huh. Wow. Uh huh. Hmm. Yeah. It's incredible. Mm hmm. I'll be damned. But know. no, there's nothing wrong with this at all. Nothing. Who cares? I mean, it's it's shift. Cheney was one of those people that uh, <sighs> voted to impeach uh, Donald Trump all seven times. <laughs> Jeez. I added that last part because I don't really know how many times they tried to impeach him, but they it did was a enough. lot. It, it was, was a enough. lot. It was stupid. They didn't need to. It was unnecessary. Well, and what good? Is, like, Once again, who else was impeached? Clinton. Did it do anything? No. Right. That's what I've never understood. Why right. is it that they're making such a huge deal out of this? If you impeach the president, you should also kick him out of office. Yeah, he should be removed. If if the president becomes unable to do their job due to impeachment, they should not be holding the office anymore. Right. And if you can't get them kicked out, then the impeachment should be nullified. I'm saying, no, no. I'm saying, like, that should be part of it. If you yeah. are impeached... Then you're out. And it's successfully impeached. You're out. You go. And that should apply across the board. I don't give a flying fig who it is. Right. Because what it's good does fired. it do? What good does it do other than theoretically keeping people in office for no reason? Right. And you can say all you want to that they have no power. Well, if your team, if, if, if he's part of your team, 
people are still going to be, you know, voting and doing what he wants. And you bet your ass he's going to be signing everything away as quick as he possibly can. Sure, why not? So, because he's, you know, he was there. Right. So, what was the point? Other than giving people in the country something to argue over. Because the left the media is going to say it one way, the right media is going to say it another way, mm-hmm. and we're all going to sit here in our little tents and yep. our little cubby holes or mm-hmm. our little you know foxholes, aiming at. at the other side, mm-hmm. keep calling each other one, each other person a traitor and, and an enemy. You fail ya, and we're not. That's not where we're at. That's not who we actually are. We're the ones who are being lied to. Mm-hmm. We're the ones who are being manipulated, not by the person, your neighbor, who may be on the left or have left-leaning terms or whatever, that's not the enemy. The enemy are the people that are so corrupt in power that they've gotten us arguing with each other. About it's stupid. Instead of doing our due diligence and our responsibility as, as Americans by doing our homework and voting in people and voting or voting in people that are good and voting out people that are bad. But we have gotten complacent. We have gotten lazy. And this has happened. And we let it ride, and we let it ride, and we let it ride to the point that we're here now. Mm -hmm. Because I promise you, you might be surprised at how much all these people that, that are completely adamant and against what we, you know, what you think or what I think, I bet you would all be really surprised if everyone for a moment could be open-minded, sit down and have a conversation. You'd probably be surprised at how much in common we all actually have. Yeah. We're just hearing it. We're just hearing two different sides and are believing two different lies. Well, no, it was, okay. So my, my oldest daughter, she has a, she has a new friend. They've been hanging out a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, the grandma brought, it has been, you know, transporting back and forth. And I had a conversation with the grandma. Okay. Now, uh, the grandmother is, uh, you know, she she's a attorney, or she was an attorney back in the day, or she was le- uh, she was legal. Okay? Yeah. Legal assistant, whatever. Ter- and anyway, so, but she was a big Bernie fan. And I asked her if she was actually a Bernie fan or if she, uh, if she believed in his platform. Yeah. Did you like Bernie for his stuff or did you just not want Trump? It's like, did you like Bernie because he has seven houses and he's a multimillionaire that's never had a job in his life? Or did you like the stump that he said that he stood on? Yeah, which it's also, like, by the way, he you know didn't stand on. Was against all know. the things that he said he was for. Yeah, that he had, you know, yeah. the houses and the income and right. stuff. Yeah. John Adams once said, but a constitution of government once changed from freedom can never be restored. Liberty once lost is lost forever. Nearly 250 years after Adams famously wrote those words to his wife, have you been left wondering if liberty is indeed lost forever? Many people are feeling that way. And who can blame them when they hear things like, History is truly at a turning point. We do not yet know the full extent and the systemic and structural changes which will happen. However, we do know that global energy systems, food systems, and supply chains will be deeply affected. With talk like that, maybe liberty is dead. And now is the time when things are shifting. There's going to be a new world order out there. Or is it? From the people behind the number one critical thinking podcast in the world comes Reviving Liberty, a podcast experience unlike anything you've heard before. Join your host, Andrew Coppins, on a path towards rediscovering what liberty is and how we can apply it in today's age of darkness and tyranny. Get ready for a liberty mindset in your life. Andrew will be with you soon, taking the first steps on the path toward reviving liberty with you in the meantime don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform and engage with the show by visiting revivingliberty.com and follow andrew on social media at the coppin show
This is Defenders Live. This is exciting. Yeah, no, back to the uh, back to the story. So, I was um, talking to the grandma. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, she's a big Bernie fan. I asked, you know, are you a fan of him? And I explained where I was going with that. Or just or, not or, a fan of Trump. Or are, no, 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 not that. Or are you a fan of the Bernie Sanders platform? Yeah. You know, the, 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 the whole for, socialism. For the people, yeah. so, you know, we're, we're, you know, whatever that. And she's that. She's more along that line. Okay. I was like, okay, great. Okay, that's fine. We can have a conversation then. We can talk. We, yeah. And we did. We You're semi rational because yeah. you can at least say you've thought about what right, right, whatever right. it is you right. thought about. And we got into the topics about like healthcare and whatever else. I was like, Okay, can I ask you this? Uh, what about what is health care? What is health care? Because I remember back in the day we were talking about health insurance. Yeah, it was health insurance, mm-hmm. not health care. Health care is a totally different framework. You cannot, you can't say doctors you, provide health care. Yeah, doctors provide health care. We pay for it with health insurance. Right. You know. So. It's one of those situations where I'm look. I, I I talked to her. I was like, D- "You understand that it got out of hand in America because she was talking about how it would be better if we had socialized medicine and yada yada yada." I was like, "But you do understand that those countries come to America when they need something immediately, right? Right. They they need it immediately. They come to America. They come here. <laughs> Why? Because we can afford to give it to them. Right. We can afford to make it. Why? Because we have to charge for our services. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. And I was I, I I went through that entire process, and we had a great conversation. Back just to pause on it real fast. Now we can have a discussion about how the fact that the insurance companies, and with the help of the federal government, have completely foobarred. Oh yeah, the entire healthcare system. Oh no, and I went through that. how we went from yeah. having a doctor mm-hmm. who you know I mean he didn't make he wasn't a peasant, but he wasn't wealthy either. He Thanks. was middle class like he everybody else. He was middle else. class like everybody else. They make ho- house calls. You paid for his experience and what and his knowledge on this. Right, yeah. And it was due to the schooling, through the insurance companies, through the state, and as far uh, with the colleges, mm-hmm. uh, all that, the corruption and stuff in there. And then, that is what led to the pot spot where we're at now. And you add on to that the fact that it became a benefit at work. Right. Instead of you right. having to pay for it out of pocket. Right. If, if we... If we as individuals had to go and buy our own insurance, mm-hmm. individual insurance, mm-hmm. no group policy, nothing like that. No, no, no. Pay out of pocket for you. Pay out of pocket every month. Have to do it. Not taken out of your paycheck. There is absolutely no way, shape, or form that the insurance companies would have gotten as sleazy as they have. Yep. Because the free market would have gotten rid of them jokers a long time ago. Right. Right, and it was only because they were able to slip through with all of these different PPOs and HMOs mm-hmm. and you know, all these other little plans and going through and, and making it so convoluted that they can just say, well, you know, this is there and this is in network and this is out of network and this is whatever. Mm-hmm. And segregating their entire notion here where it used to be, because once again, it used to be health insurance, okay? What yeah. was that covering? That was covering a dire need. Yeah. Dire need. I need surgery. Health insurance. Help me. I'm about to die. <laughs> Health insurance. Uh-huh. Not, I need a checkup. Yes. I, not, not, I need to go get a physical. Not, I need to go fill out, a go, go do my physical for the year so my company doesn't overcharge me and then and say that I owe more money because technically I might be overweight or out of shape based upon their directives of what they believe in the group policy or whatever else. No, none of that. No. Uh, Health insurance is supposed to cover drastic catastrophic failures and issues. Yes. And did you know that they actually have catastrophic health insurance? Yep. Still? Yeah. Do you know that no one category? Nobody accepts it though. Because again, like you said, I'm going to get it through work. Right. And so you can individually, you can go to, it's actually, uh, what, which one is it? Um, I think it's Geico. Uh, possibly. I think it's Geico. Geico has segregated insurance, mm-hmm. right? They've got different, all these different things. But for health insurance, they have 
uh, they have the the, the catastrophic. Yep. They do. Catastrophic medical. Okay. And so you can go and you and it's cheap. It is super cheap. Why? Because it's not that often that it would happen to you. The likelihood that it would happen to you is very low. Yeah. It, what it's supposed to be ultimately is for folks, say, like me. Yeah, you know, eventually. I don't, yeah, I, don't, I mean, I'm going to need, I'm getting older and I'm going to need to, do, you know, do some checkups, do some whatever. checks up and things like that. But, but ultimately, you should be able to pay out of pocket for that. I haven't been to the doctor in years. I don't need the doctor. Like, I get the common sicknesses. I get the flu sure, once in right, a while. Right, 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 right. You know, this this whole thing with the ear infections, the swimmer's ear. You know, I, I, I just. Did you, go and, did you go and consult a doctor for that? I went to urgent care. The emergency room. Yeah, the urgent care or whatever. No, not emergency room. I went to urgent, urgent care. care. Because, right. again, I knew it's not an emergency. And you don't need a doctor. And you I need, don't... Right. I don't... You, you need a well-educated nurse. Right. Which is what I got. And she was not, she was nice and very, you know, very sweet about trying to help me out. I don't... I think Great. she should have gave him, given me an antibiotic orally, but that's another argument altogether. Yeah. But my point is, is, is I went there, paid like the 125 bucks... Out of pocket. Out of pocket. And that right. was it, which is ultimately the same thing that you would do anyway. Right. Because I don't need it. I'm not sick. Now, I'm, granted, I'm getting, I'm getting older. There's things I need to check up on. There's things that are going to need to happen. Mm-hmm. That might change down the road. But right now, I don't. I've been in the hospital once, and that was because of a freak uh, 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 infection that I got somewhere in my spit gland or something over on my left side that... Um, yeah, actually, I, I had to go to the emergency room because if I didn't go, I'd have been dead. Like, it would have killed me. Okay. But it's because I, I would have strangled me to death. But that's a whole right. different... That's a whole nother another. That's a whole but nother once again, another. you had to go to the doctor. That, that was an emergency. That was an actual problem. Right. right? That was a situation. So, it, it used <clears throat> to be that was the whole deal. Okay? You didn't have a problem. You didn't do that. If doctors came to your house, you paid them for the, for the visit or whatever. That was it. Mm-hmm. Okay? And you always had a local doctor. Right. Somebody that was in the area that you could call and say, hey, oh, we need a house visit. And that right. doctor was always busy. Yes. Yeah. But then he started realizing that, hey, schools that are offering this stuff are going to suddenly start getting government grants, government mm-hmm. funding. Yeah. Oh, well, now that they're going to get all this money, now they're going to start doing things the way the government wants it done. Right. And the same thing. Suddenly the- now the cost of education for being a doctor skyrockets. Well, now mm-hmm. these doctors are having to you know, offset it. Yep. Somehow. Now they can't afford to actually do and go around to doing it. Also, don't get me started. It, it, on the, the whole, hospitals. On the hospitals. The licensing behind it. Oh, yeah. Because the that. licensing won't allow them to go to someone's house and do anything like that. Not just that, but the overcharging on the simplest things. Right. Like, I understand that there's a, there's going to be a markup for anything. Right. Okay. I get it. I get it. Hospitals included. It's a business. It's not a charity, even though everybody claims it to be a charity because it's a hospital. And they say people. Blah, blah, blah. No, it's a business. Yeah, it's a business. Okay? Hospitals are businesses, okay? Everything that they do for you, they have to charge you. And obviously, they usually charge the insurance. That's one of the problems there. Because if they didn't have to charge the insurance, or if they couldn't charge insurance for the little stupid things, yeah, like a bag of saline for three grand yeah. when it cost 20 cent, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's not quite that extreme but yes it's the same i have thing. seen it it's the same thing it's this, the military was the same thing everybody used to bitch years ago about the 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 budget for the military yeah it's because they're charging you know three thousand dollars for a hammer and ten thousand dollars for a toilet seat yeah it better be made of gold it's and not. it was but it was that it it was because they could right that's absolutely what it was they it was allowed could do it yeah it was allowed that was the point and then and that's the problem now there's all kind and that's and that's why i think that's why a lot of people nowadays are just more content about about being <sighs> pampered? Well, no, I was going to say like stuck in in the teams. Yeah, stuck it's, in it's, the stuck it's in better that for bind. it's better for for me to and I'm I've been playing hypothetical. It's much easier for me to stay on this side of the fence. I'm going to be in this little group and I'm going to fight tooth and nail regardless of what may or may be right, may mm-hmm, be right, mm-hmm, may be wrong mm-hmm. about it. I'm going to fight here right. because this is closer to what I believe in. Intellectual Why? dishonesty. Right. But I'm going to do it because the corruption to actually fix it is going to be so difficult and take so long and be so crappy that it's not worth me doing. 
Okay, see, that's why... It, and that's the problem. That That is the issue, because everybody else in the political world are playing the long game. Right. Like, if you're anybody that's trying to make real change in the world politically, they play the long game. It isn't short. It's generational, okay? Right. It isn't the next 5, 10, 20 years. No, it is 30, 40, 50 years down the road that they're looking for. Yeah. That there is no quick fix. That that is their that is their line. They're looking at by the time that I'm dead. Yeah, you know, if I started in if I started in politics now. Yeah. Okay. By the time that I'm Joe Biden's age. God help you. That is the is the lineage of most of their planning. That's the basic line. That's the bare minimum. Of their planning. It could be 200 years, but that's the point. Yeah. The planning involved in all of this to put it together in everything to guide us to a different realm has been in place for the past 150 years. Yep. They've been slowly building framework upon framework, and everything has just been add ons and tack ons to bills. So you pass a bill and you tack it on. And everybody's like, well, why'd you vote no for this thing? It makes common sense. It's because that little tack on right there. Yep. And that little tack on right there is not necessary. And it's it is something that will hurt our nation. And then they get screamed at. And then they back down. Yeah. And then the other people win. And, and then that, come that, that gets put through. And everything continues. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> James on Twitter. So the theory from contact about the military having a $200 hammer isn't a uh, wash funding for secret bases that can't show up on a paper trail. Uh, I mean, technically it, it is, but it's not, it's, it's, it's not, it, it's the, the, the funding for it, the crap about it is actually very accurate. <laughs> it is very accurate. I've seen the pricing that they do for this stuff. And again, it's because they can. Right. Because both sides treat it like it's it's nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They treat it like, like, like there is an empty, bottomless pit yes. of money that they have perfectly, you know, they have unlimited access to, will right. flow forever. Mm-hmm. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Forever. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. We'll square it up in a minute. Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, and that's just that's just where we're at. And 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 I th- again, that it, I'm starting to think that that's the true reason why. Because I sit here in a struggle. Like, how is it that people can be having be on both sides of the aisle and both of them be intellectually dishonest? Being, being all <laughs> the, how does that work? It's like, how do we look at the? It's like okay. You know the, the they have the whole thing where it's it's you have um, you have something painted on the on the on the road and you have two people across, on both sides of the road and they're both pointing at it and they're seeing two different things because they're standing at two different perspectives. Yeah, yeah. How is it that they're both wrong? <laughs> right, and that's easy. It's it's be- like it's a handicap sign. No, it's a number five. But instead of handicap sign number five, that's a stop sign. No, that's a pie. Yeah, it's it's that different. <laughs> I just, and I think again, I think it's because a lot of people inherently know and have an understanding of just how difficult, how much work it is going to take to fix mm-hmm. everything, right? And it's going to take eons, and it is going to be, and that's why we laugh about it, painful, and nobody wants to do it. So it's just easier to get in on our side and hold up on our team and hope to God that that we might win. Mm-hmm. Which just news flash, spoiler alert: Not nobody, nobody, nobody wins. wins. Nobody, nobody wins. wins because in the end, we all ruin everything. Right. But they're hoping that they can get on their side, and if their side wins, then there'll be the ability to fix it, and it's not what's going to happen. No, that, that's why everything leads to dystopian nature. Yeah, so. Because we're fallen short people. No. Short-sighted fallen people. That's, that's how it is. No oh, goody. Oh, my gosh. Anyway. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. <sighs> sure you don't want to save that for him tomorrow? You know, well. Only I, because it'd well, be we ha- so we'll, funny. We'll, we'll talk about it now. Aww. Right, and then we'll bring it up with him at the end. We'll yell at him about it. Later. Yeah, 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 yeah. So on Monday, two university educators warned readers at the Boston Globe that 
Bachelorette party attendees in Provincetown, Massachusetts are, quote, asserting their privilege, end quote, in the local LGBT safe spaces. They're asserting. 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 Uh -huh. privilege. A bunch of drunk woo girls woo. are asserting their privilege. Woo! Uh-huh. They accuse these, quote, mostly white women, end quote, of attempting to, quote, escape their straight world by attending local gay bars and drag shows during their festivities. Pause it. Pause. Oh, I am, because I have Pause. something I want to say, too. Right, Go so, ahead. Um, you may have the floor. Okay, so um, I was once a teenager. You were. I was. You were 17, I, 16 going yeah, on, yeah, 17? Yeah, right. and I was also once in early 20s. Really? Yep. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I once in that age. I guess that would be the progression. Yeah, yeah. In I, numerically. I kind of went through that. And uh, you, uh. not being a gay person, being straight, uh -huh. I still went to the gay bars because I got free drinks. Now, <laughs> I did too. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> I mean, when you look like Tom Cruise and you walk in and you're about the same height and you're about the same build and everybody's yeah. like, oh. Yeah. I didn't get as many free drinks as I was hoping for, but I well, tried. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it would have been better if you had the beard at the time. Yeah, but I could. I mean, you see me. At that, yeah, <laughs> you were goofy. I was lanky, goofy looking SOB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it, it was for the free drinks. Honestly. <laughs> well, and here's the thing, and that's what I was getting ready to say. From the, Let's flip that to the female side. Mm -hmm. You have a group of girls. Yes. That don't want to get hit on by men. It's not even just hit on. The risk, the, okay, the likelihood of a woman mm -hmm. being raped. At a gay bar. At a gay bar is literally zero. It's a possibility it could be in the negatives. No, you understand? No, no. It's, in a, now, Hold on. Yeah. Let me pause. Throw one little caveat in there. Reverse here. No, we're not going to quite do it that way. Just a little caveat. Let's just be on the understanding of this is just, this would have been normal, regular, mm -hmm. gay people. Okay? Gay yeah. drag shows. Yeah. We're not talking about these cats who are, no, I'm really a, a, a girl. Yeah, not those ones. Just not the, those. the ones that are actually doing the drag shows. Right. The yeah. the true the ones that are just in there to do drag show because they like doing drag. The ones who It's it's their release for the weekend yeah, or whatever. Or straight up yeah. gay men. Yeah. The regular guy. Those are the ones you could they could be safe around. These people that are walking around saying, Oh no, I'm I'm this or that. No, no, no. No, no, no. That one you run the risk of no. being raped on. Right. But in general, Mm -hmm. A gay bar, women feel most safe. Why? Because they're not going to get hit on. Mm -hmm. And and they're going to look at most of these gay men as just a bigger, you know, oh, look, it's all my girls. That's it. And that's it's how it makes gonna, a bigger group. It's a bigger group for them. Yes. I don't see what the problem is other than the fact that somebody in Massachusetts is upset. You mean to tell, so here's the deal. So the, the gays are upset that straight people are enjoying their time with them. How dare they? <laughs> How dare they enjoy, enjoy their time, time around us? Around other people of different nationalities and belief standards and, you know, uh, sexual orientations and everything else. Dear God, how, how dare, dare you, you straight white <sighs> women try to be inclusive with other people and actually enjoy the community that they you say is all inclusive? Trifle and hussies. Good for nothing type of person. <sighs> God. <laughs> Two educators behind the op-ed are assistant professor of community health, the director of the Health Promotion Center at York College at Vincent Jones, second professor and director of gender, sexuality, and feminist studies at Middlebury College, Uh huh. Laurie Essick. So while, while we were doing that back and forth just there, the mm -hmm. only thing that was popping into my head was the Orbitz gum commercial with the, you lit liquor. I know. I thought that too. <laughs> Just, I thought that too. I was like, oh, this is too good. <laughs> it's too good. Dirty mouth. Clean it up. <laughs> Yo, that lacquer. Yeah. Anyway. Jones and Essage called bridal celebrations in LGBT spaces the process of, quote, heterification or heterification. Let me enunciate mm -hmm. it properly. Similar to 
gentrification. Okay, all right, okay. Educators blamed attendees of bachelorette events for ruining venues because they feel, quote, privileged to take over spaces of others. End quote. Just, Steve Ann, how may I help you? Usually, um, bachelor parties and bachelorette parties, they, they, um, they rent out the space. No, they don't. Not always. Not always. They give them a heads up that they're coming. They give them a yes. heads up and like, hey, look. We, hey, we, we need like a, we need to make we sure we have a booth, booth and, and yeah. whatever else. We're going to do this. Is there anything if, special? You if can it's cut necessary, because if they say, oh, well, if you're doing an event, you know, you got to rent it out. Mm-hmm. They rent out the space. It's. Yeah. It's not a privileged thing. No. It's okay? a business transaction. Right. <laughs> The bar's like, oh, okay. So you do want, okay, that's You fine. want a booth. That's going to cost you X, X amount, amount of money. Dollars. Do you want a couple tables put together? That's going to cost you X amount because you're taking up space for your party. Yeah. I'm going to go on a limb and, and bet, almost guarantee, that the uh, bar owners and places like that, the event they don't care. locations, don't give a flying fig whose dollar or who's paying that dollar over. They don't care if it's a straight man's dollar. Nope. Or a gay man's dollar or Doesn't a straight matter. woman's dollar. They don't Doesn't care because you know what? It all spins the same. Again, the only reason why I say the only reason, and I might be wrong. The main reason mm-hmm. I think that a woman would want or insist to do something around the agree. gay community is the feeling of safety. They have a they they don't feel like they're going to get pressured into sexual advances. Right. They're not gonna they're going out to hang out with their girls and it's just meant to be their girls. It's not gonna be a moment where no. one of their girls is gonna get drawn off by some guy to go home with yeah. or anything like that. Side it's, note here. Yeah. Side note. Normally in these times, women are a lot more raunchy. Well, yeah. As well. No, and I got I'm, that. I'm I'm putting it out. So But that would hold on, but just so we're clear, that is up then to the them. business. That's then well not, not and the bit well I'm saying the business. If the business is, doesn't like what they're doing. What I'm saying is though, they're they're able to safely be that way. It's like, okay, guys night out. Right. Or guys get together. Right. Okay. We get together. We're, we're doing whatever we want to. We're talking trash to each other. We say the worst things possible to each other. Nobody gets upset, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Right? Right. Right? Right. Okay. Women don't do that. They can't do that yeah, normally. They don't. They can't do that normally. No. Of course, it, they're also hateful, evil things to each other anyway. But that's a, a whole a different... Lot of way, in a lot of worse ways, and they mean it when they say it. That's yeah. the problem. It's, it's never, you know, I could say the worst, most racist, most uncultured thing to Dylan right now. And he could laugh it off. Probably. He, he could laugh it off. Because I'm telling you now, you may think it's bad. I probably have He's heard, heard worse. worse. But that's the other point. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. He would laugh it off. Watson Prunier. I miss him. I do too. I love that man. I wish he would, like, not be a stranger. I know. But he is. Watson, if you hear this, buddy. Stop being a stranger. Don't be a stranger. We love you. He ain't gonna hear but this. we could also say the same thing. Could we? If we could. We could. If we were able to actually get together with that man. Mm-hmm. How many times have we picked on him? Oh, yeah. Picked about, on him on the show. On live, on air, about, you know, being, you S- know. Silly. How many times has he picked on himself? Millen and uh, his Millen and, uh, deficient. deficient. <laughs> efficient. <laughs> or efficient. Yeah, that's right. Efficient. Yeah, yeah. He's melanin efficient. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we could say the same thing. We could throw out the worst thing possible to say to that man. Mm-hmm. And as long as we are by ourselves, mm-hmm. and he knows us, and it's and just the group of guys, yeah, and there's nobody else, and there's no cameras, and there's nothing else, we're all gonna laugh it off like a bunch of twelve year olds, yeah, because it's funny. <laughs> That's what guys do, right? We could all get fired from our jobs the next day if anybody heard anything that we said, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, Adam W. Johnson over on Twitter: the drag clubs are not gay bars. Technically, they are. Drag, drag clubs. clubs, right? It sounds like they're uh, like they're saying they don't want straight mu- people's money. Drag clubs are technically entertainment venues. Gay and straight people come for the show. Drag shows are fun. I've I've never done it. You never gone? A, never been to a. Dra- I don't think I have. If I have, I don't think I've noticed it. Like I walked into one bar in the middle of the day in Florida years ago in Jacksonville, right? And it was. I, it was more akin, I think, my, based off of memory. It felt like an old movie theater. Okay. 
Okay, like you walk right. through the, it, like it was off the street like that, and then it wasn't on the front like a, a movie theater. But once you walked in, like it was the red velvet carpet, the walls were red, uh-huh, it had some, yeah. and you walk down like a, down this ramp stairs, and then as it opened up into the club, yeah, there was, was like cages hanging from the ceiling, yep, yep, yep. and mm-hmm. I was like, that's more BDSM, I think, but whatever. It could be. I don't know. I just know that it was odd. Anyway. <laughs> that's the one in Raleigh? No, this was in no. This was down in Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, Jacksonville. Okay, because mm-hmm. there's one similar to that in Raleigh. Oh, you're talking about um, where they would do Rocky Horror Picture Show? No, no, not not the theater. The Rialto, not the Rialto. 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 That's the theater. Yes, that is the theater. This was not a theater. It was oh. a bar. I don't know, I just, but it just had a se- instead of doing the down the stairs thing, it had a separate room that was a dance club that had the cages. Oh. Ah, yeah, that was weird. Yeah, I've never been to drag shows. Mm-hmm. I. I, I mean, I don't care. Like, I, I, it's not because I have anything against them. I've just never, I've never frequented it. I'm. It was. Not I'm a also thing not a you. fan of. I'm also not a fan of strip clubs in general. Like, See, that's regardless. Yeah. Well, but I, that's me. Well, the only time I ever went to a gay bar was on Goth Night. This makes sense. It makes sense, right? It makes sense. The people that I hung out with at the time, they were the gothic kids and whatever, and they were like, oh, that's Goth Night at the gay bar. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. I was like, okay, cool. I get free drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray for me! Hooray! <laughs> so no, but I just I don't I don't. But then again, I was also the DD most of the time. Yeah, no, that was me too. Yeah, no, I I don't I but I don't understand the problem with it. They everybody complains all the time about you know there's no inclusion and all these groups are being isolated and they're being excluded from things only to turn around and have moments like examples of this and then they bitch because oh my god you're coming in and taking over they're not taking over. They're just paying for a They're thing. people who want to hang out and socialize with other people. If you say that the LGBTQ community is a safe space for all people, then you should agree to have them there. Right. I and mean, a cl- inclusion. It should be everyone included. Right. That's what inclusion is. You include everybody. Allegedly. Not, but uh, supposedly. That's I'm beginning do, to I mean. believe that that's a lie. Allegedly. It is. It is definitely a lie. James over there on the Twitter is like Watson's white chocolate caramel coffee commercial. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you can get yours. At AmericanPrideRoasters.com. Uh-huh. It's AmericanPrideRoasters.com. I still have got to make an order. I can't. He, I haven't uh, done it yet. I know. He he is back up and running. Everything's yes. good to go. It might be an extra week delay, but that does well, not Well, no, mean, an extra couple days. Uh, well, at, mo- at most a week. A week at, at most, most. But yeah, a couple okay. days. Okay. Uh, but you can get your coffee from American Pride Roasters if you go to AmericanPrideRoasters.com. Um, mm-hmm. You can also go to our website. You could. You could. It's could. a D-O-A-E show.com. If you go there, you'll be able to do a lot of things. One, you could buy some merch. Two, you could become a defender with us, and you can hear the next hour that we have coming up. Three, you get a free shirt if you become a defender. And that's us. just the beginning. That's just the uh, very beginning. Oh, man, it's going to come. I'm telling so you. Soon. <gasps> so soon. I am so excited. Like, y'all do, do, don't. Do, do. Even and he just can't hide it. No, oh, it's so good, dude. Like we're, we're the stuff there. that's getting ready to explode out of here, you're gonna want to be a part of it. I'm uh-huh. telling you, yes, ground floor level. You're, it's, we're getting there, bud. <laughs> we're going. We're setting it up. It's gonna be there for everybody else. I'm excited. All right, but I just can't hide. It. That's right. So, otherwise, that's it. Remember, tomorrow we got an interview. Uh, so go check the uh, check, it, that. check that out tomorrow, and uh, that'll be the first hour, 9 p.m. Right. Do that and all that and stuff. All the stuffs and things. And you guys be good. See you guys. Bye.
of common sense and comedy. This is Defenders Live. Woo. Are you a woo girl now? Is that what that was? <laughs> woo. 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 They just don't want uh, drunk preteens and... <laughs> It ain't preteens. It's it's it, it's that it's that early twenties. Yeah, I know. It's Ugh. Oh come on, you were that age at one. I was, but I didn't care about those girls. I didn't need well, the, that's not entirely true. I, I I did not care about the woo girls that they were I was like, eh. I wish I I wanted to be, but it was I found out later that it was pointless. What, to care about them? Yeah, to try and chase them down. Oh no, yeah, that's pointless. Because they're just like, you know what? No. It's like I stayed in my lane most of the time. Yeah. Oh wait, I think that's. But then again, also, um, I was, uh, uh, um, I was a douche. <laughs> I wasn't. I was always trying to be the friend. Oh no, 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 no! I was a douche. No, I did. I was I, always. I always tried to be the friend. Nope. I was not. I, you did not have a friend in me. <laughs> no, sir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, wow. for, 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 yeah, no, just didn't happen, huh? No. We're, we're but the there. funny thing is, so that was, that was a very short time because it was just, it was just the high school years yeah. where that happened, where I was like, no, I don't care. Wow. And then after, well, see, after high school, I, I had my now wife. Oh, you know, yeah. It was like right after high school, you know, we, anyway. The rest they say is history. Right. So there you go. No, I've never been. I've never had, I've never been the whole douche. I could never be the douche. I, I there yeah. was a point in my life I kind of wanted to try and, and be. They, I mean, no, that like. It just not, never worked. Never well, happened. See, when I was in high school, I was one of like the few people that actually <laughs> had a job. Oh. So I actually had money. Because <laughs> if you have a job and you're in high school, your money goes nowhere. <laughs> yeah, so you're just like, sorry guys, I actually have a life. <laughs> I got something to do. I have responsibilities. Not with you. Yeah, you guys have fun. <laughs> I got paid to go do homework. That was bad. It was great. Because I worked, uh, I worked at a little kiosk. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I did mainly night shift stuff, right after school or whatever. And I'd get there and the weekend nights and weekends, and I'd go and I'd do my homework and get paid. Nice. It was a it was a great gig. It was a great gig through high school. It was awesome. Huh. Anyway. And eases and hoozin. Mm-hmm. Uh, citing drought. Oh, don't get me started. High don't feed start. cost. No. Whatever. And other mounting production expenses. Farmers are reportedly downsizing cattle herds. Couldn't be because they're trying to uh force people to Vegan? No, uh, for American consumers specifically, this means that Americans are now going to pay higher prices in beef. No, you don't say. It's what's for dinner. I mean, they're, they're high, higher gas prices, mm-hmm. higher food prices, mm-hmm. is all these shortages and all this stuff going down. But you know, no, don't worry about it. It's all good. It's it's all it's, it's normal. The economy's fine. Completely fine. We're just crazy. Uh huh. Maybe. You think I'm foolish. You think I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. 
But it just might be, I just might be the fool that you're looking for. According to Reuters, U.S. government data indicates that uh, on July 1st, Uh ranchers had, quote, reduced available cattle by 2% from their 2021 numbers, such that the amount now stands at the lowest levels in the nearly seven years. Fewer cows means increased prices, which, compounded further by the higher labor and fuel costs, are passed on to the shoppers. Of course. Yes, that's Again, how it works. This that's is supply a, chain. That's how it works. This is the plan. You know? Because God knows we can't actually have anything comfy. We can't actually have a decent life. Well, you have to put people in misery to force them to change. Yes, because then we turn around and go, please make it stop. And then once they go, oh, you want it to stop? Well, we can do this. And now you're so mm-hmm. ready for it to stop. You kind of lose all rationality. You're like, you know what? That sounds like a great idea. Let's do that. You know what? If it makes it stop, I'm going to do it, even if I even if I don't like it next time. Mm-hmm. Right. And then they do it. You hate it. And you can't do anything about it. But because you live you with it. For it. Yeah. You live with you it. You live with it. And you live with the guilt and shame. Like that you Obamacare. Did something. Right. It's there. It's become a thing now. You kind of don't want it. It's really pointless, expensive, it's and it's unneeded. But you know what? It becomes a way of life, and you just kind of accept it. Mm-hmm. And that's just the way it is. And that's what you tell yourself. And you tell kids moving on, that's just the way it is. It happened, and we couldn't get rid of it. During such herd reductions, a temporary boost in supply can be expected. No. But as the cow slaughtered uh, are uh, precluded from reproducing, they stop them from doing that, uh, the... Medium term result is uh, more expensive meat. Yep. So in the meantime, less meat, more money. Yay! One such reduction occurred in Texas last week. The exchange at the livestock market at Deca- uh, Decatur um, allegedly, allegedly saw about fifty percent increase. Wow! Uh, from the uh, hundred uh, from the fifteen hundred head normally received in the number of cattle taken to auction. Wow. So they're, get ri- they're getting rid of a ton of cattle right now so that soon there won't be enough cattle. So the prices are going to go up. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not telling you what to do. You may not be in a position to do so, but if you can come up with some, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Some expendable fundages? Right. Some extra cash. Extra cash laying around, something happens. Something to just tuck away. Right. It might behoove you Mm -hmm. to maybe uh, consider buying a cow. Just saying. If if you can do that. Or, you you know, there's a lot of people. You can get the milks. Well, here's what I was going to say. Like, a lot of people will will go in, at least around here. I don't know if it's everywhere, but I know around here, there's a lot of people where you can you can get a hookup with a family. Right. Or and more than one, and you split the cost of a slaughtered pi- uh, uh, cow. A cow. Mm-hmm. And pig. You can do that yeah, too. you can do that too. And you, you split the cost of it. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you could do the same thing with a live cow. You guys, is, uh, somebody could be in a situation where you could turn around and go, hey, you know what? Let's all buy this male and this female. Right. And we'll breed them and we'll handle it and do it ourselves. Not everybody is in that position to do that. But I'm just saying, if you have even a small bit, whether mm-hmm. it's the land or the money or both, might be a good idea to look into. I know it'd be something I'd like to do. Yeah, I, I want to. I really do. I just don't have the land, but I, I might be able to come up with the money. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? Might be able to f- fork that over. And I'm just saying, and it's, it would be an investment that you may not get anything out of it right this moment. But mm-hmm. you know what? Mm-hmm. It'll carry over. You can right. push it down the road. Carry on my wayward son. Right. In a year, this time next year, you'll you know have a, like a... Another cow or two. Yeah. You could have a small herd. Of cow. Yeah. You know, and it's... Cowsin. <laughs> Cowsy. <laughs> it's cowsin, yeah. Cause cowsin, it's, yeah. Like boxin. Mm-hmm. Like oxen. Or meesin. Right. Moosin. Moosin. Moose. <laughs> Moosin. Moosin. <laughs> Moosin. Meese. Boxin. I'm stupid. <laughs> I love Brian Regan. He's funny. <laughs> so good. Hey, he's such a funny, funny guy. Uh, so anyway. Rancher Martinez uh, Munoz 
uh-huh. uh, told the WFAA uh-huh. that he had run out of water to feed uh, his cattle. I didn't. Now, far be it for me, as I am not a rancher, but I don't think you feed water to a cow. With, <laughs> with hay said to be too expensive and uh, Munez, uh, Munez's uh, grass killed by the drought, he had no other option. He's like, well, I've got a family, to, uh, family I need to feed. I need to swap some cattle. I've got a yard that I can't keep cut. Do you realize that I'm about to put a fence up in it and, and put, a, put a cow in there? A cow or a goat? No, no. I'm putting a, like a cow. Goat milk is good too, though. Yeah, but it, I have more. Cows, I, I eat more beef than goat meat. Let's just put it yeah, that yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, but I know, but it's less expensive to have the goat. And delete everything metal, like in the grass too. All, no. the, st- all the stuff that you run over. All the crap that the kids leave in the yard. It'll just chew it all up anyway. At least I'll never have to worry about them, like, you know, hitting it with a lawnmower or anything else. You can just be like, the kids will be like, where did my toy go? The goat must have ate it. It was gone. She told you. I've told you. Don't leave it outside. It's the goat. Yeah, but the goats aren't going to eat snakes. Yeah, they will. No, they don't. Yeah, they will. Nah. Come on. Nah. Yeah. Cow will. Mainly grass, though. No, but I'm saying they'll get to a snake. They'll be like, fuck you, snake. <laughs> do you do you not know how powerful I am? That's about <laughs> I am cow. <laughs> <laughs> Hear me moo. No, I've, I've, I've considered it. Like, I really, I really have considered trying to find something, a figure, something. I would love to have it. God willing, and the crick don't rise. Outside of, like, this show, I would love to be not quite isolationist, but damn close. In the farming uh, rain. I want to farm. I want, you know, to you grow my own crops. I want to have my own oh, livestock. Home on the range. Yeah, I know. Yeah, right. and I don't care if it's, a, again, I don't care if it's a community of people. If we could all band together, have a little settlement of our own. We have the livestock, everybody working together. You're cool with to the hippie stuff. commune thing? It's not hippie. With the workers commune? I, I'm more, I'm okay. Well, no, I'm, 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 I am okay with a community of people, a community coming of together people coming to work together on a land to, yeah, to trade services and expertise to survive, right? To get out of, of I'd be the perfectly crap fine with what's going on. I've actually thought about like the wife and I have had deep conversations about doing this. Like I'm dead serious. Like if I could get, you know, there's, there's a, there's a spot mm-hmm. in Youngsville. Of course it's closer to town, right? It's actually in town. But just as an example, it's 30 acres of property mm-hmm. that they happen to have out there. For no reason whatsoever. There, no, no, it's for sale. 30 I acres of, of land. Now, again, it's in town, so it wouldn't work. But I digress. 30 acres would uh-huh. not be bad to put three or four houses. Right. Medium-sized family. You know, my clan, say like your clan, maybe one other one. We have a couple of cows, a couple of sheep. We have a spot, you know, a couple acres to actually cut or, yep. you know, for yep. farming. A couple buildings for, like, tools and everything else. Right. Like, it's... A shed just for this. It would be feasible and doable for us to all survive on. A nice building for this. Yeah. Like, it could be done. Uh-huh. It could be done. It could be. And, every, again, everybody's kind of working... Good. It's not a, oh, well, you know, is that... No, no, no. You come into this knowing that you eat what you help produce. Yeah. We all know if you help produce or not. If you don't help produce, you don't eat here. You don't get nothing. Like kids, I have a, smi- a slight pass until about thirteen. Well, no, that's what I'm saying too. But I'm talking about like the adults. Like, if oh you're, yeah, yeah. If you're the fire, if you happen to show up and be on our little commune or whatever you want to call it, if you're gonna hang out there, if you don't work, right? If you don't eat, right? I'm not. I'm sorry. Like if you roll a bed at ten o'clock and eleven o'clock and do nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, you're done. You're done. Now, Mm -hmm. everybody has days and everybody has situations and stuff goes on, whatever. We understand that. But at the end of it all, if you're not putting in an an obvious effort, sorry, not sorry. (laughs) That's the door. We'll see you later. Right. I'm not playing this game with you. I mean, I'm not too keen on going out and farming and staying out in the sun all day either. But I would. I would. I would much rather do that because at least then I know I'm doing for myself and no one can take that away. Right. That's where I'm at. Right. I'm all, I'm all down for that. Give it like 100 acres. 100 acre property. Put a couple houses on it. Make sure that it's surrounded by woods. Oh, of course. And then just, you know, that like way you can... One good trail all the way through so you can get to the main road. And that, that main road is at least 
10 acres away. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you could do hunting. That way we could still have hunting right, we right, could right. do yep, yep, yep. while, you know, crops and stuff are growing. We'll mm-hmm. have to buy some stuff initially. But I mean, yeah. I, I would love that. And you pff, leave me alone. Let me survive right. and do me because I don't like how you're doing it here. Yeah. <laughs> or trying to make me do it here. Right. I like the I'd idea. I'd even be able to set up a tower for signal. Heck yeah, we could. I, I just don't, <laughs> Heck yeah, we could. I don't want to deal with this crap anymore. I don't like... I don't we'd mind be able to set people, up a, but... We'd be able to set up a relay tower. We could do all kinds of junk. We could do a relay tower, have a satellite dish on there for, 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 TV, for TV and for, uh, for radio. Yeah, I could handle that. And for internet, we can actually put out uh, transceivers to get the, uh, the Wi-Fi... Uh, not the Wi-Fi, but the, the 5G. Yeah, we could. We could put 5G, 6G you, like transceivers it's, it's out there. It's all feasible. Boop, boop, the problem with it is you're talking about relocating r- around here. I don't it's know, a lot of money. I don't know anywhere else, but around here, about 100, 100 acres of land, even crap land, you're looking at about a mill. Easy. Minimum. Easy. Minimum. And I don't have that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the credit for that. I don't have close to that. You know? So I mean, it, I, could have, I could have credit for about a quarter of that. But it would have again. It would have to be somebody else would have to front it though. Yeah, and it would have to be set up to where like again, there's here's the section that's going to be farmed. Mm -hmm. Here's the dairy side, or here's the livestock side. We'd have to have an here's the housing side. We'd have to have a steady income stream to make sure that we could do all this while running it. Right. Well, no, no, it would have to be not this. I'm talking about doing the. uh, We'd have to have a steady income stream in the beginning. No, you wouldn't. You're living off the land at that point. You literally just we just hunt and. You'd still have to pay for the land, is what I'm saying. Oh yeah, we'd have to have an income stream to pay for the land. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. I was, I, <laughs> we don't. Live I wasn't in thinking olden, about that. We don't live in olden times. I'm thinking about literally just going out into the middle of nowhere and, and just squatting. claiming it's yours. Right. Let's go to Alaska. <laughs> just claim this is ours. Let's disappear into Alaska. No one will ever know we're there. Nah, it's too cold. I agree, but yeah, too know. cold there. We can go to the uh, Midwest. We can find a spot in the Midwest. Sure. I know we could. It's just all flat land there anyway. Sure. Mm-hmm. I can handle that. Anyway. Anywho, so a pro Antifa high school teacher, Gabriel Gipe. Okay. Not gripe, Gipe. In California, received $190,000. A three year, uh, three years of his salary. He made... Three years of this man's salary is $190,000. Yeah, so that's roughly $60,000 a year. In California. In California. Okay. In exchange for his resignation after getting caught on video saying that he would turn his students into revolutionaries. I'm, I'm going to just... Spit. He wasn't fired. No, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spitball to something just here real All right, quick. Sure, yeah, yeah. I don't think that uh, revolutionaries are, are part of a high school curriculum. So the teacher said that he, would, uh, he needed to, quote, scare the F out of the students to motivate them politically. Wow. And even offered them extra credit to attend right-wing rallies as opposition protesters. In a secretly recorded video, Guyp also said that he had an Antifa flag in his classroom. Wow. And when one student said that it was, uh, he was uncomfortable with it, Guyp replied, Well, this Antifa flag is meant to make fascists feel uncomfortable. So if you feel uncomfortable, I don't really know what to tell you. Hold Basically on. Basically calling a kid a hold, fascist. Well, I was going to say, hold on. That's a lie, sir. If you say this flag is meant to make fascists feel uncomfortable, so if you feel uncomfortable, you do know what to say. You just don't have the balls to do it because if you did, you would have been really in trouble. Right. Because you would have blatantly called a child a, a fascist. fascist. God, you're an idiot. Yeah. The Natamos United School District paid Gabriel Guype. The aforementioned $190,000 to leave his position in uh, Indercom Indercom High School. Wow. And not battle it. So don't fight me on this. Just leave. Yeah, just just take it. Here's $100,000. Take it and go. Leave. Just we'll 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 worry about this. We'll fix this up later. Because if you fight it, then it becomes this horrible thing and you'll never be able to get a job again. That's what it is. 
<laughs> the, <laughs> here, here's, here's the fun part, the funny part. Okay. Listen to this. The paper said that Gype's payout was taxed. Okay. The final check tol- uh, totaled uh, about $100,000. Okay. <laughs> so much for that three year thing, huh? Gype, whose annual salary is 60 grand, got paid $100,000 for three years of three hours, allegedly of three years of work. Right. Only $100,000 out of the $190,000 mm-hmm. that they were offering him. That's, it's, it's amazing when you talk about taxes. And how much do you have to pay out of it? Because that is almost exactly 50%. (laughs) Oh, no, no. That's what I was getting ready to say. So you, you heard, see the story about the guy who won the billion dollar, like 1.2 or 1.7. No, 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 no. uh, Lottery. Yeah. Like 1.7 or 1.2 billion, billion. Did he take the 20 or did he do the lump? He did the lump. Okay. So anybody in their right mind who, okay. So yeah. Well, if you take the lump, you only get half uh, uh, anyway. No, no, no. You don't get half. They tax it at the full thing. No, you also only get half. No. Yeah. You can't get half. If you want it, it's no, you tax the whole thing. They it in one lump. Mm-hmm. That one lump at that that's what I was getting ready to say. He won like 1.2 billion. He, he got, got 560 something million. Million. It's still 560 some million dollars. No, no, I agree. I completely agree. He's still way ahead. <laughs> don't 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 mistake in that. But it was still like the amount. It was earnings. Yeah. One point something billion down to five hundred. He went for a a briefest of moments. The minutest was, of seconds. He was a billionaire, billionaire. Right. And just quickly confined to hundred million. Which again, way above where he was his status before. Way above. And where I would we're at. never complain. I would not even say a word. No. I'm just saying it's, it was just incredible would, the difference. I would take the twenty year. You're an idiot. No, no. You absolutely are. Because everybody, every economist, every money person has ever said that if you get the, the, if you happen to win the lottery, you take the lump because you technically pay more in taxes over the 20 year over period. Over the 20 year period. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I got you. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. I got you. Okay. Just, I would take the 20 year. <laughs> you keep saying that. I'm hoping you'll give a, a logical reason as to why. You take the 20 year. Okay. And what you do is instead of accepting the check, Mm -hmm. you dump it into an investment setup. Like? Like you take it and you put it into uh, stock mutual funds. Like you you go and you say, okay, boom. The first check you take, right? Uh Uh-huh. The first check you take, immediately you take it. Okay? Okay. It's winnings. Boom. Done. And they, they take out their taxes. Then you set up your funding. Right? Okay. You set up all of your accounts for your growth stock mutuals and all the rest of it, your investments, all the back end and everything else. And then what you do is you say, no, I don't want you to pay me. Mm -hmm. I want you to transfer that money at the beginning of the year into this account. Okay. Don't pay me direct. No, I want you to transfer it into this because it's already been won, right? Yeah, but it's won to you. Yes, but I can tell you where to put that money. If I never personally touch it, Mm-hmm. If I never personally touch that money, like it never goes into my bank account, yeah, I don't have to pay taxes on it until I pull that money out. Okay. Okay. And then you're only getting taxed on what you pull out. Right. Okay. No, nah, it's still no. No. Me, yeah. And then I have, the and then <laughs> 17 generations down the line still have money. No, I get you. Still, still have money. So I'm like, nah, still. Uh, uh, yeah, I got you. I, I would just take the lump. And it mostly is because I I'm, probably would just take the lump just because, because at this point, yeah, I mean, at this point in my life, I'm, I'm old. I don't have time to you sit. You 20 years. Yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at least. Yeah, but I want to have fun with it. And I'd you rather, can have fun with the, the no. $1.2 billion in yeah, 20 year. One, cut. just so we're clear, if I won the lottery, it sure as hell wouldn't be at $1.2 billion. No, it'd be or like, seven it'd billion. Be like a, a $100,000. I mean, yeah, it might be a, a million to whatever if I'm lucky. Yeah, and get you paid know? five hundred grand. Or right. Whatever. So mm-hmm. it's not like, you know, it's not like it. And I have to play in order to win, which, which I don't. don't do. No. 
Because I get too chick. I'm too much of a chicken. It's not just chicken. It's no, no. For me, it is because what'll happen is I'll go. I got twenty bucks. It'd be just fun to play, and something will happen. Something, anything. I could use gas. I need cigarettes. I want lunch. Something, and I'm gonna go. Oh, I just wasted that twenty bucks. And then you're going to be upset at yourself. And I'm going to be upset at myself because at least I could have had something tangible with that 20 bucks. Now, there is the chance that I could get a million or more. Sure, yeah. But there's a guarantee that I could have bought gas and cigarettes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It's, it's, the, it's the illusion of, of, the, of the idea. Right. I get, I get it. I get it. Right. I get it. Yeah. And I don't like that. Mm-mm. It sucks. Yeah. But whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, we'll be right back. Defenders Live. Oh, oh yeah. Check that out. Oh, so good. So pretty. So good. So good. I just realized that our uh, what? little scrolly thing up there has our Facebook, and we don't even throw stuff up on Facebook anymore. Well... <laughs> I mean, I can take that off. You want me to take that off? Well, I mean, we could. It might as well. I just, I'm just saying. I've noticed it's still it's there, there. and it doesn't need to be there. Okay. Well, I mean, I can take it off. No, I just, I could do it like right now. I mean, honestly, well, no, we're doing a show. I mean, yeah, it's just something I notice is what I'm saying. It's there. It's there. All right. New York Governor Kathy Hochul has just signed a law that stipulates "quote unquote" inmates in her state will now be referred to as incarcerated individuals. What? <clears throat> yeah, it's a move that is uh, unlikely to stymie the surge of violent crime that has recently plagued nearly every major metropolitan area in America, including the New York City. So, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so we're changing terms again, <laughs> right? All I can think about is <laughs> instead of calling them a janitor, they are what is it? The cus- ma- custodial maintenance engineer. Yes, <laughs> like shut up, you clean toilets. Go to hell. Stop 
with the too many words. It's, it doesn't change the fact. You, you paint a turd gold, it's still a turd. Like, okay, do you understand what inmate is? Really, it's it's a compound word. No. Do you, do you get it? It's a compound Is it? word. Technically, you could put an apostrophe between in and the M, and it still would make perfect sense because it's, it's incarcerated mates. It's people, persons. Well, that's why she said it. It's incarcerated individuals. That's what it already Not means. Inmates. Yeah, you're literally you're not changing literally even the the name you're quote unquote changing it to doesn't change the name to anything. It's it's what it already means. Yeah. You're, you're literally just making it a longer thing. You're making the name longer. Nobody wants longer names. That's why they shrunk it to inmate in the first place. You moron. Right. You want to know why? You want to know why? <laughs> When, they, when people were incarcerated and things like that, most of this happened to be, well, you, you call them inmates. What do you call people on a ship? Shipmates. Yeah. Incarcerated companions. <laughs> I know. Where, I know. Where did people used to get incarcerated during naval battles? <laughs> you mean in the brig? Which is on? A ship. So where would it be? <laughs> Be an inmate! According to a statement released by her office, Hulk claims that the language change will help, quote, justice involved, quote, persons feel better about themselves and may perhaps encourage them to engage more seriously in their rehabilitation efforts. Absolutely no one that is in jail will care a single fuck about this. (laughs) It's justice involved persons. We're not on a network right now, so I can say that word, and I don't care. Justice involved. That is hyphenated. Justice involved. Hyphenated terminology here, guys. Why don't you just call it just evolved or something stupid? Just evolved. Just evolved. I don't know. Like, quote, individuals. I don't know if I could do this with a straight face or not. I'm trying not to laugh. This is so stupid. Individuals impacted. individuals impacted by the criminal justice system have long mm. noted that terms such as felon, inmate, prisoner, and convict dehumanizes individuals and perpetuates the idea that incarcerated people should be permanently demonized and stigmatized. Oh no, let me finish this. The language change within the state law will reduce stigma against people involved in criminal justice system and therefore eliminate barriers to opportunities that they will face. Hey, yes, go, yeah, go. All right. Fuck it, go. If, if, if you are in a prison, uh-huh. you are a criminal? If you are in a prison, you're an inmate. Is that what you're looking for? No, you uh, are a criminal, a prisoner. Okay. Okay. A felon. Oh, no, 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 hold on. An inmate. No, no, hold on. A convict. If you are a person who committed a felony, you're a felon. Okay. All right. So we're on the same page? Sure. No, mm-hmm. I've, I've been there the whole time. I don't think these people are. If you have been convicted of a crime, you are a convict. Okay. It dehumanizes individuals. What about uh, they had done it to themselves? They dehumanized themselves. <laughs> They put themselves into the position of losing their rights. Yeah. They lost their rights. And one of the things that we need to push and understand is that, guess what? You, as an individual, mm-hmm. as, 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 a, uh, as an American, as a human, as a whatever else, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. You intentionally stigmatized yourself and put yourself into a position of being demonized by doing something that was not only against the law, but (laughs) can put you in jail. Well, that's against the law, but yeah. No, some things that are against the law don't put you in jail immediately. Well, that's true, but you got to be convicted, tried, and sentenced. You're still going to be a convict. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. You've did it to themselves. Like, you can't sit here and say that we've done this to them. Like, all no. of us on the outside are just calling them that because that's they what did we it to themselves. Them. Right. 
It's to themselves. They did it to they themselves. They made themselves, if they committed a felony, made themselves a, a felon. Right. If they're in jail, they are a prisoner. If right. they have been convicted of something, they are a convict. The dehumanization was done to themselves by themselves. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the thing. And, just so we're clear, yeah. you're stating fact. Yeah. Now, here's the deal. Once, don't like it, don't do it. Once they get out, mm-hmm. if they have a proven track record, once they get out that they have gone clean, didn't do the things and whatever else... Cool. Yeah. Cool. That's why there's a probationary period. Yeah. <laughs> That's why when people leave jail, they don't just get gone. Yeah. There's probation. Why? Because they're still considered a prisoner, a convict, a felon, an inmate. Why? Because they did something horrible enough, terrible enough, against the law enough to where they needed to be in that place. Yeah. They did bad, no good, very things. No good, very bad things. Now, Drug convictions are a slight weirdness. Yeah, because I mean, because we, if you, if you, I think we can all kind of agree that doing, like the, if especially if it's just you got caught, you're, well, if you got caught doing drugs, I don't think you should. You nothing. There's, but I think you're, you're killing yourself. Anyway. If you're selling them to children, you that's need, different. No, you just need to be gone. That's different. You need to be gone. But I think the use of it and everything else and is is whatever. I, I, okay. So the use of it is whatever. Individual usage, no big deal. Got it. Cool. Uh, trafficking, not great. No. Not great. No. Okay. However. Not, not great. <laughs> However, uh, we have drug companies. <laughs> you do the exact same thing. They do the exact same thing. They just do it legally. I understand that tra- trafficking drugs that are quote unquote illicit. Uh, mind you, most of those illicit drugs were once a medicine, uh, but they got stigmatized. Okay. So illegally trafficking drugs. It's against the law. Yeah. It's against the law. It is. If it's something like marijuana, I don't care. It's marijuana. Marijuana doesn't kill people. Honestly. Allegedly. No, no, I'm pretty sure. Marijuana <laughs> doesn't kill people. Um, but if it's cocaine, if it's heroin. Heroin? Heroin. If it's the black balls, the black tar heroin. If it's, if it's the, the meths and all the rest of it. Yeah. The, the fentanyls. That... You you should be actually that's death row to me. But Why? Because Why? that shit kills people. No, of course it does. Like fast. No, of course it does. Like but fentanyl specifically, fentanyl and meth specifically. But I'm just okay? just just, just so to... coca- hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Cocaine. Mm-hmm. I kind of see. Okay, cocaine is kind of fine. It's actually natural technically. It's it's basically like caffeine amped up. Okay. It's okay. amped up caffeine. Okay. So, eh, no, not death penalty there. Okay. Whoever uses it, if they use it incorrectly, that's their own fault. Uh huh. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. That's the cocaine. Okay. The heroin. Uh huh. No. Okay. The meth. So heroin, meth, and fentanyl are all human man-made things. Uh huh. Constructs, synthetics. Yep. No, no. I'm, I'm with you. I'm just okay. waiting for you to finish. All right. So, and they're all not only extremely, extremely addictive. Hmm but very easily OD. Mm-hmm. Right. To the point to where if you aren't precise as shit mm-hmm. on that stuff, mm-hmm. you can die. Mm-hmm. And fentanyl included, you could just get a whiff of that shit and po- knock you out. Yes. Not I, even, will not, I will not argue the uh, okay. potency so, of it. So it's, 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 if it's, you are trafficking in the meth, the heroin. What and, if you're just making it in your trailer? Uh, no, definitely not. If you're trafficking, d- d- making, distributing those three specifically to me, mm-hmm. those three. Okay. Uh, we can talk about everything else, but those three. No, you are uh, you are life in prison at, at 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 least. Yeah, I don't know. I don't necessarily agree, but mine is being for a whole different reason. Because like, okay, you know, people huff paint. Well, yeah. That's improperly using something. That's improper use, yes. You could you could die doing that. But I'm talking about the proper use of of heroin and No, 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 I got that. I got that. I got that. I got that. The proper use of that stuff can still kill you. No, I got that. I got that. Quickly. But there's a lot of other things that people could do that they get Sure. You know, that that would, you know, whether it's properly used or improperly used, can kill them and they'll find ways to do it. You know, sure, yeah, yeah. Pam out of a dirty sock, whippets. I mean, all this stuff can be done the same way. Now, obviously, is it as potent as say fentanyl no. no i'll give you that 
but the, the concept is still there. If somebody wants to get high, they're going to get high. True. And as my feel on it, and this is just me, my feel on it is as long as the individual who is engaging in destroying themselves mm -hmm. and even bringing and supplying other people who choose to destroy themselves, as long as they are not, and this is going to sound weird, as long as they're not killing people in the process, meaning if under the influence of said narcotic, they're not going out like the whole uh, bath salt bath things salt and thing, all this yeah, stuff. The zombie thing, yeah. Like that. That's bad. Yes. That outlaw. That absolutely. Because now their high is affecting other people. Okay. okay. All right. If if the high affects someone else mm -hmm. adversely, okay. Then I should then then we can start talking about a problem. If you want to kill yourself, you're going to kill yourself. You're, it's just going to happen. I, I no no I'm fine with that. I'm all about. Like, I'm I don't like part. it. I don't want to see people dying. I don't want to see stuff like that spread. Right, but at right, the right. same time, it's like you know what? Fine. If you're that hell bent on it, enjoy. Oh yeah, no. If the person has it, that's I'm, when. If the person has it and they're using, I'm not going to try and stop them because they're probably going to stab me with the thing. Well, anyway. yeah, because so, that's where I don't believe in it. But that's where natural selection starts coming in. Right. That's that's the whole. Yeah. That that's that's taking the warning that's, label off of the hair dryer so the guy can blow dry his hair in the shower. Right. Bad idea. Yeah, but if you're dumb enough to do it, then then you're good. Then you don't belong. Probably this is probably not the stop for you. Right. Yeah. 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 But no, I'm there with you on that one, okay? That's that's the individual thing. The distribution of it, though, well, and is again, where I'm at. And like, again, like even... It, 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 there's so much coming across the border, too. No, no, and I and I see where you're at with it. I, I think the reason I'm not even worried... Because, again, I'm thinking from the angle of... Individual I, freedoms, liberties, and... Because if you make it more free, I don't think then the push from across... Oh, things no, no, will no, be... No. The demand and stuff will be as oh, high. No, no. If you make it freer and you make it like everything's taxable... The demand will go up for the next two to three years, and, and then, then it'll, it'll plummet. plummet because all those people will die. Yeah, and nobody else is tapping into no, it. No, no. If you make it, if you make it legal, this ha this has happened multiple times in multiple countries. If you make it, make every drug legal. Okay, make it legally sold anywhere. Yeah. Okay, uh, that gets rid of the black market. Yeah. Because it's unnecessary. Okay, and then and that, this is where I'm, so if we did that, if we went that way, I'd be cool with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd be cool. Oh, I'd definitely be cool with but that. It's never going to happen. No, I know. It's never going to happen. It's it's never, so with once again, it sounds in, good, in the system that we're in, yeah, those three things I can't, I can't abide. No, and I can give you that. I, guess. I can't abide those three. Yeah, you know, you want to, you, you want to have some peyote. You want to do the little mushrooms. You want to do the th no. Go ahead, knock yourself out there, Tonto. That's fine. You, you go have a good acid trip and, you know, come LSDs. Yeah, sure. Okay, whatever. That's It's going to come back and haunt you in the next 30 years, but you, go ahead. Not always. It literally stays in your spinal cord. I know that, but it doesn't come. It stays in the spinal fluid. You can pop your neck and get high again. It hasn't happened yet. Um <laughs> <laughs> That is a it is a that is a truth. It hasn't happened yet. It is a truth though. But I can't pop my neck anymore. Yeah. So, so it literally embeds itself in the spinal. Floor. No, I know it does. I'm just saying it, it's one of those that. Yeah. I just when it comes to, to like I. I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm at a point I'm at a point in my life where I think that you know we kind of have bigger fish to fry regardless. Everybody does, but that's you know, the point. Yeah. And that's you know. So Hokel's biggest fish is uh, the naming. Is of the inmates. naming of these people because yeah. you know, mm -hmm. if we change the name of it, if we don't call you a convict, if we don't call you a felon, if we don't call you whatever, then maybe you might not. Maybe you'll feel better about yourself. You'll feel better about yourself, yeah. and you won't want to do it again. Right. Not the other way around, where you're criticized for being something and you don't like it, therefore mm. you stop doing it. Right. You know, like you don't like being burned. When you touch the stove, so you so, so you instead stop of touching the stove, yeah, when so, it's hot, right? Instead of learning to do that, you blame everyone else and just say, "Well, no, the just stop saying the stove's hot." That's pretty much what she's saying. And now for something completely different. For years, experts have been debating the issue raised by deep fake technology. Yeah, it happens a lot. Congress and the military have discussed how to prepare. The country for the fraud that is likely as deep fakes become more and more and more realistic. Mm. Now, the new advancement by Amazon okay. has taken the technology to, to a brand new level. At Amazon's re-Mars conference in June, 
Okay. Mars. Yeah, re Mars. M A R S, and it's Got it. like all caps, so it's actually an acronym for something. Reply to Mars. Is that what that? I don't. I don't know. It's. it's is that a, what R E stands for? R E is reply. So it's R E colon, colon Mars. Mars. So but replying, Mars. But Mars is caps. So it's obviously it's something. An acronym. That's an acronym for something. Yeah. Uh, make and, Amazon really smart. Maybe. <laughs> make Alexa really stupid. <laughs> uh, conference in June. Rohit Prasad, uh, head scientist and vice president of the Alexa AI, demonstrated how Amazon scientists could recreate any voice based on just one minute of an audio sample. Oh, I'm, we've known this. We knew this was going to happen. Like, we knew they were close to it. Yeah, like, we're not surprised. Like, anybody surprised by that? No. Hey, they're going to take your voice and be able to manipulate things. We've been telling you this for years. You dummies. For, for years. Yeah, dumb, dumb, dummies. Now they've just announced it. Oh, thank God, because I was worried. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just so stupid. Oh, well. Good for good for Alexa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, Alexa yep. needs to have But a... they're making it for, for user friendliness, obviously. They're not... They don't want the flat, monotone Alexa voice. No, they, they want the Alexa to have uh, personalized voices that are highly desired. You know, it's a highly desired feature by our customers, they say. Um, and we could use this technology to create many delightful experiences. And we're working on improving the fundamental sciences that we demonstrated at ReMars. Hold on. Wasn't there a... Um, didn't we do a story at one point about... Um, be the there there, and this this is why this is all sounding way too familiar. They they already have this kind of stuff because they were doing like, oh yeah, you, you could can. do the voice of your your dead. Yeah, we talked like if about your, if your mother in law yep. or somebody mm-hmm. whoever so a loved one died. Yeah, you can have their voice recreated. Yes, and put into, it was a small thing pretty, or yeah. whatever, so and you could talk you, to them. Right, so you could always hear them. Right, that's which that's, is scary as hell. It is. That's just creepy. I agree. I mean, I get it. I get it for agree. And yeah, we talked about that. Where you're, you're. So that's ones. why this doesn't yeah. make sense to me. It's like whatever, dude. You're already doing it. Like why? They've been able to voice clone for a long, long time. time. Yep. Mm-hmm. You're just now doing it for something else. Right. There. There's been many times Morons. where people can. Uh, there are microphones that are specifically designed mm-hmm. to take your voice in and project out somebody else's voice. Yes. As long as you have the cadence of that person, you're fine. Yeah. It's, well, you know, whatever. Which is why every now and again I change my cadence. So you never know. So you're always guessing. You'll never know. You'll never know. (laughs) You'll never (laughs) find another love like mine. Now on August 4th, 10 p.m., a motion sensor on the clay... Hainer's ring camera alerted him to the movement near his van parked outside his home in Dallas Designs District. Okay. Hainer told Fox 4 that he checked his live security feed and saw a guy walking around his van and started to move to the sa- uh, move some of the stuff under the van. Uh-oh. You know, he decided to try and put stuff under the van. Uh-oh. Upon seeing the suspect crawl under his van directly, uh, d- despite the de- deterrence he had installed earlier, Hayner equipped a metal light stand uh, and a and ran out. Uh, he equipped a metal light stand. He, he took it <laughs> and ran out there to confront the guy with a metal light stand. Yeah. So it, it okay. Yep. Of all the things he could do, he the, there's a light stand. I'm grabbing that because it's a pole and it has a big hefty end on it. <laughs> Yeah, but like we have light stands. Yes, yes, we do. I, I would you under any circumstances attempt to try and beat someone with it? Not that one, but I've got a I've got a shorter one in there. That's like uh, it's like it's the lamp, like a lamp stand. Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, because the bottom, the bottom has some heft. Yeah, but still, like, and it's circular too, so I could like palm it. Mm-hmm. I guess I don't know. I yeah. guess I could wave it around like a hammer. It'd be great. <laughs> It really would. Mm-hmm. There we definitely, go. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Definitely good. Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely good. Yeah. Hainer, a photographer who claims never. Have I bef- ever? To before. So that's actually one, one of these. It yeah, that's what I'm thinking stands. too. Yeah. He has never before engaged in a fight. Found the suspect allegedly armed with a knife. Allegedly. 
quote he took. Uh, he looked. He, he looks at me, and he holds up a knife, and I just lost it on him. My God. My adrenaline was just going. <laughs> Beat the shit out of that guy. Using the light stand, <laughs> Hayner clubbed the suspect multiple times. Since the suspect was momentarily stuck under the vehicle, he was able to beat him for a while. <laughs> he had it coming. He had it coming. Yeah. The suspect can be heard on video yelling, I'm leaving! I'm leaving! Hell trying, no, you're not trying leaving. Trying to flee the scene. Hell no, you're not leaving, sir. I'm going to kick your ass up and down this place. And for anybody out there, the suspect was trying to steal the catalytic converter on the van. Because <laughs> that's the only that's the only thing that you can make money off of. Uh, just saying. Wow. Yeah. Hainer noted that he regretted in permitting this suspect to get away, but was otherwise happy and having defended his own property. I mean, there is, there is I that. I done good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there he, is that little bit of like, yeah, yeah he got I away. Got it. This is good. Yeah, but at the same time, though, I, I wouldn't have gotten. I away. would not have let him get. Not without like one of those. Uh-huh. If I find out that another catalytic converter is missing in this, and you in can, this you, area, you can't even say town because it's not fair. But like you say, within two blocks, four blocks of right. this house, you'll know. I promise you, it's that guy. This will be the. This will be nothing compared to what I will do to you then. Like, it would be like a holy God make you poop yourself kind of moment. Yeah, but you can't do that as a as a dinky photographer that was holding a light. I, really? You just got your ass whooped up and down by, by a, a light, by a light stand. pole. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, at that point, you lose, sucker. That's even more embarrassing. Like, yeah, you have the right to turn around and take it, whatever. Yeah, yeah no. you, you can threaten. You can threaten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because as, as as the guy who got beat, you'd be like, Mm-mm, don't be any seen anywhere in that neighborhood ever again. Hannah said, quote, at least I got a little bit of revenge for, the, uh, for all the past stuff that's happened. That's true. All the past stuff that happened. This was, after all, not the first time someone has tried, uh, has come for his catalytic converter. Quote, this is the fourth time they've tried to take it. And they've gotten them twice. <sighs> Wow. You know how you keep them from getting it? Electrified barbed wire. Oh. You know, there's an easy way to rig up some battery, uh, a battery line and hide it. Yeah. To where, you know, when you turn off, like you could have it set to where you can rig it to turn it off and on. And yeah, so like, flip a switch and the juice flows from the vehicle or from the battery into. And you can even put it on a key fob. Uh-huh. To go boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's part of your electrical safety You'll never see it coming. It's just you take a little bit of that battery charge and just kind of run a line on there. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'd be fun. The moment they get underneath it. Yeah. And then if they if they get stuck. <laughs> uh, whoops. I'm sorry. Serves you right. Barbecued man underneath my car. There's like all kinds of things. Like at this point, it's... Yeah. Did you know in North Carolina you can't just sell a catalytic converter by itself? Nope. You have to be able to... You have to be able to prove that Document it, came, it yep. came from a vehicle and... Came from your vehicle, not just a vehicle. No, 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 no. Well, or a ve- yeah, vehicle that you have been allowed to have. Yeah, you, you either have... You have to have documentation that you own the vehicle itself. Yeah, as in like... Um, <laughs> and usually what will happen is, is the dealer... Not dealerships. Um, uh, repair places... Like eventually, when they turn them in, they have to have like the and receipt saying that yes, from the van, so we have yeah. thirty-two catalytic converters. Here are thirty-two work orders that we have taken that have been instructed to take the catalytic converter off. Right, and also here's the VIN numbers for all those cars. Yada, yada, oh no, yada. all they need to have is the thirty-two. Like I know that for a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like do you have you could go with the VIN. Some of them will be sticklers, but mostly it's just you have to have proof. Here's thirty-two says we could take them off. Mm-hmm. There's thirty-two catalytic converters. Right, that's it. Yep. You know, and they have to be within a certain time frame and, and blah, blah, blah. Yep. But finally. <sighs> finally. Finally. 
This I don't understand this. One. I don't understand it either, but quickly. Shortly after Donald Trump was elected president in November 2016, mm-hmm. his running mate Mike Pence attended a stage production of Hamilton at the Richard Rogers Theater in the New Yorks, and he got booed. Remember that? They I do remember that. Giant that stink out of that. Not a big deal, yeah. I didn't care about it at uh-huh. all. What's more, when the play was over, Brandon De- uh, Vicker Dixon, who played Aaron Burr, addressed Pence from the front of the stage. Talking trash about him. Basically yeah, told him to, you know, suck an egg. Yeah. Which was a little douchey, I would think. I mean... Fast forward to recently. Now, a Texas church is under fire for putting an unauthorized version of Hamilton, which includes biblical references not in the original production, as well as a sermon after the play was over that likens homosexuality, drug, and alcohol addiction. Quote, the, or the Hamilton honchos of, in New York said that they didn't give the Door McAllen Church license or permission to stage its performance, which uh, was live-streamed Friday and Saturday, and included scenes where the characters Alexander Hamilton and Eliza Schuler Hamilton talked about how Jesus saved them, the Post said, citing vi- uh, videos from the author and podcast host, Hemet Mehta. So you're saying that they changed it, so it's not the same thing. Right, that's what it sounds like. So then, obviously, it's not... If it's not the same thing, then it's not the same thing. Yeah, then you can't say anything. And you can't say anything. At all. And it's a church, and they're not making a profit off of it. They just... Life... Whatever. Right. It it does Whatever. And as far as the whole likening homosexuality to drug and and alcohol, it is. It's called sin. Yep, it's all sin. It's all All the same. All of it's sin. Yep. It's all the same. Yep. So, you know what? Complain, be stupid, whatever you mind. I don't care. It's silly. You're you're douchey. So stop there. stop attacking churches. They don't they have to because it's the only it's, thing they can do. It's the only thing they can do. Yep. Anyway guys. Alright. Love we'll y'all. See you tomorrow. Have fun. Bye y'all. Bye.